Hello and welcome back to another week with me, uh, Minion J, uh, survived again by the uh, disgruntled octopus. So basically, he has asked me to pass a message on to you. He will be back next week. He's been in America, apparently, um, something with the presidential election. So I'm <laughs> not too sure what that means, but uh, you basically, he'll be back next week. But there'll be signs, apparently. So yeah, big shout out to uh, Shane from Soda City Flips. He did get me this shirt. Let's get cracking. Uh, so surprisingly, it fits me being an XL. <laughs> Normally, we're two XL, but uh, big thank you to Shane for sending that across and some stickers. Um, I did put some stickers on some crates that I was using today. So this is one of the Soda City Gang stickers he flicked through. Uh, much appreciated, mate. And you'll have to let me know where you get your stickers made. Um, I really, I really don't know where to get them made. We we really don't have a big sticker culture here in Australia. So uh, if you let me know, I'll, <laughs> I'll pass it on to the octopus and we'll go from there. But today I want to actually, um, I suppose I wanted to talk a little bit about variation listings. A lot of people in uh, the Discord that I'm in, Grumpy Granny's Discord, uh, majority sell books. They they love books. They sell books. They <laughs> they talk about books till the cows come home. Uh, quite frankly. And I think I've said before, books bore me to tears. <laughs> uh, contrary to that, you know, I'm a bit of a hypocrite in that respect. Um, I've got tons and tons and tons of manga, right? So what I've spoken about before is, well, I suppose, better get back to the scratch, what, what variation listing is. So if you're not reselling um, or you're very new to reselling, a variation listing is when you go on eBay and you actually see that little drop-down box. And I'll show you a bit later uh, what I mean, how we actually work it. But you can click down a little drop-down box and select the items you want. Uh, yeah, add them to your cart. Then more often than not, it combines the postage and goes from that perspective. Um, so each of these manga books you see, and probably about 300 more that I've got in the garage, is actually individual listings, right? And I put on my uh, Instagram story today that I've actually got a, just clicked over a thousand listings, which I don't want a thousand listings. Uh, most of the listings I probably want at the height, probably about 750. Um, I'm trying to shrink it back to a very lean store that has a very high sell through rate and a higher ASP. These manga um, currently. I've got them listed for about $9.99, around that $10 mark. Um, Manga used to be a phenomenal seller a couple of years ago. Um, I think I've said it in previous podcasts, that, but on the um, you know, the the report that eBay, I can't remember what the report is, but I was the number one manga seller in Australia for a very long time, probably a period of six months, uh, <laughs> which is you know, quite, a, quite a feat. That was in the secondhand manga, right? So at the moment, like I said, these aren't moving at $9.99. I've, I've had these forever. I can't, I've been marking them down from probably $15 down to $10 plus postage, which is it's around about that $11 mark now that postage has gone up. So what I'm going to do, um, I want to reach out to the community and see what your thoughts are with variation listings, um, what you do with your book listings and all these different things. So Grumpy Granny and I, when we used to chat quite frequently, uh, she is doing well. Uh, she has reached out to me in the last week or so. Uh, she's catching up on the death pole. As to what's going on with her YouTube channel, I really don't know. and I can't give any guidance about that. Um, I would just say, hey, look, you know, if you are wanting to support Grumpy Granny, uh, probably just keep watching her videos. She'll get revenue from that way and she'll be greatly appreciated. Uh, but one of the things that, you know, Grumpy Granny used to tell me all the time, um, Mel back from Burnout as well, and a lot of other booksellers in the Discord as well, is actually they bundle their books, right? So they might theoretically, uh, this is a manga called Bleach uh, and Full Metal Alchemist down the bottom. <laughs> so these aren't sequential numbers, right? And this is what the problem is when it comes to actually listing these individually. Um, so I've got number one there, I've got nine, 17, all these different things, right? So... If you go off what Grumpy Granny says, if you go off what a lot of the other booksellers say, they all bundle their books, right? So they might bundle these five together and then they'll make another bundle of five, all these different things. What I am suggesting, and you know, like by all means, booksellers, please let me know because <laughs> I'm not one of your kind, um, is that I want to look at it at variation listings, right? So create one listing with um, all the available books and all the volume numbers. Um, so these are quite replenishable from my perspective, right? So I can come across manga quite often at the thrift store um, and all these different things. So my variation listing, like my Skylanders, will only contain that one book series. So yeah, the Bleach will have a book series. Yeah, Full Milk. Metal Alchemist will have a, a book series. You know, my beloved Classroom Assassination will have a yeah book series. Yeah, you get, you get the idea, right? So my reasoning behind this and what I want to get your thought patterns as well is what what you can do with a variation listing is you actually select what volume, volumes you want. So realistically, um, 
you know, someone might be after volume 9, 17, 18, and 10, for example. So instead of them buying, you know, this bundle of books from here, they can actually cherry pick the ones they want out of that variation listing, uh, pay one combined postage, which are currently, <laughs> I don't have combined postage. I can't get my head around it. Please, please, please help me someone. <laughs> but variation listings do the postage for me, right? Um, yeah, so like I say, is basically that's my thought pattern. Um, I will show you some evidence on the back end of my Skylander um, listings. And yeah, by all means, if you are remotely interested in Skylanders, I've released a video on Sunday. This video should come out Tuesday morning. Um, and <laughs> probably <laughs> if you are looking into getting YouTube, don't record when you get up. Um, I felt like I was half asleep. I had no energy. Um, I wasn't as excitable as I was. Um, I literally drove... 14, 15 hours over the last two days. Um, and, you know, quite reflected in my voice. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like I say, is that it, it's it's pretty good from a Skylanders perspective. If you do like unboxing videos and gives you a bit of a, an idea behind the scenes, it is quite dry. And I might even just get rid of the sound and dub over it later at a later date just to give it some more excitement. Uh, but definitely, definitely, definitely gives you an idea of what I look for Skylanders, uh, what I look at with Broken Skylanders, what I do with Broken Skylanders and all those different things, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bounce across to my uh, variation listing on the Skylanders. Give me two seconds. Um, this is what we're looking at. So if you type in Skylanders Trap Team, uh, this is what comes up, right? So this is from my back, the back and perspective of my Skylander listing. So in the last 30 days, it's had almost 1,200 views, right? This is what I really like about variation listings. Um, 27 people currently have, you know, some sort of combined or, you know, some sort of product in their cart at the moment. Uh, so basically, this is what it presents to you when you when you select. So I've actually sold 193 units from that perspective, right? It's a quite a new listing. I've only been active for probably about a month or two so this is what i mean by the volumes that you can actually click down you can actually if we replace characters with volumes to say that's volume one volume two and all these different things so um you can basically click on the, the character you want you add it to your cart and you go through and this obviously all these different things and also with a variation listing and i don't think it's going to show me here is you can actually save up to 10 percent when you buy more so if you actually buy three skylanders or three books in this sense you'll actually save um 10% on top of that. So the books will come in essence to 9%, uh, sorry, $9 a piece and all those different things. So you can, you can go through there and, um, you know, select all the ones you, different ones you want as well. A lot of the Skylanders I'm showing you now are the ones that I actually did from the uh, Skyland a lot this morning. And it was actually tough luck <laughs> if you watched that video. So, and there's another one of us. Uh, is that my Skylander? Yes, it is. So this is another one of my Skylander listings. You can't see because I just flipped the screen. But... Like I say, I'm going to do that with my manga books because, you know, theoretically, if Bleach, for example, and this is only uh, some of the ones I've got, um, has 40 or 50 volumes in it, that's 40 or 50 listings, right? And when they individually sell, just hypothetically, two or three people, you know, select a couple of books, um, I have to, you know, muck around with re refunding postage and all these different things. But if I add it to that variation listing, so if they go through and they said, all right, cool, all right, I'm after this volume, this volume, this volume, they add it to their cart, they're only paying that $9.99 or $11.99, whatever I assign to that postage flat rate. So I could probably fit about six or seven, I'm oh, sorry, yeah, maybe a fair few books into actually a small padded mailer um, or a small box, depending on the size of the order. Um, and theoretically, if you know, if they do order 10 books or 15 books, I'm happy to forego that little extra bit of postage, you know, four or five dollars in postage to get that bigger order. Um, but honestly, I do think it's more achievable in a variation listing and be quite curious to see what your thoughts are on the matter. Um, I will do some data over the next fortnight or next month and I'll let you know um, the progress. But as it stands, like I said, I've probably got about 300 manga books in the garage that haven't moved in the last year, year and a half. And I, I just want, them, I want the space back. Um, so that's something I'm willing to try uh, and we can see how we go from there. So what I would recommend for variation listings is something that's replenishable, right? So, you know, obviously one-off purchases and all these different things won't work. Um, however, if you're coming across, you know, series, a lot of, like, like I said, the variation listings are, are fantastic for booksellers from my perspective. And <laughs> hopefully I'm not proven wrong. But what I think should be coming out is that 
if you come across Patricia Cornwell, you come across, you know, Charlene Harris, you come across all these different ones. Um, Wilbur Smith, I think it's another one. I'm, I'm, like I said, am I going off ones I sent at the op shop the other day? Um, yeah, if you come across them a dollar piece, you can add them into, you know, I'd probably wouldn't go after thick hard books, uh, hardcover books. I'd probably just go after the paperback books, something around that size that you can actually, like I said, put into a satchel and a few of the volumes. Um, but like I said, if, it, if it's something like Patricia Cornwell or, you know, Anne Rice, uh, for example, that you can get those books on a regular basis, you're just updating your, your, your variation listing like I did then. You just take a photo of the one, and as long as they're in the same condition, the ones that you get, um, it's just a matter of updating it from zero to one or, you know, one to two or how many books you come across. So that might be something you can look into. Um, so that's all I'm going to talk about variation listings today. We're actually going to do some more Reddit questions because uh, <laughs> that was quite popular last week. So we've got a couple today. So I have one. Can't have nice things. So basically, um, we have another one. So basically, the block buyers, what can they see? Okay, so... I'm actually a blocked buyer on a um, competitor's listing because they're quite cutthroat in my alternative store. Um, so I can tell you firsthand, if you are blocked, what you'll see. So you'll be able, you'll be able to see the listing, um, like I said previously, with in regards to um, for these, for example. So we'll look at you know, all the listings that are currently there. So they'll come up. When you actually go to buy that order, it will say something along the lines that, the, the seller's not selling to you or this, you're not unable to purchase, purchase this seller. So if you're actually you know, blocked, uh, you'll still be able to see the listing. You, should, yeah, you, you all these different things. Um, so take that into consideration before you block someone. <laughs> uh, they can still see your listing and still copy it. So the next one, I don't get sold then buy immediately request cancellation. So it must be, I don't, I've got an item sold, then buy immediate re, immediately requested cancellation. Uh, it was a promoted listing. Am I going to get refunded for the promoting listing or I'm out that money? So no, it will come back to you. So realistically, eBay takes the promoted listing in a separate transaction. So if your fees work out to be just say $1.60, uh, you've got a promoted listing fee of $2.20 or something along the lines of that, that $2.20 gets taken as a separate com component as a transaction so your final value fee here and all the stuff that goes with that um, and second will come up as your your average standard fee or your promoted listing oh sorry your advanced standard fee um, in addition to that so they will come back in different orders i'm pretty sure that your your promoter listing fee comes back as a fee credit but don't quote me on that do you include anything in your packaging to help avoid opening a return request without contacting you first? So this is a big thing that I see on Facebook groups all the time. Uh, do you put anything in your packages to you know, promote feedback or to, for example, you know, to you know, try and minimize returns and all these different things? Um, I'd be a hypocrite if I said I don't. <laughs> so with my Skylanders, and I said in that video today, is that you know, if someone buys Skylanders, I normally drop in one or two uh, broken Skylanders or something along those that. They, they can still use them in game, but they're not obviously presentable, right? Um, yeah, but I don't. Well, at this stage, I do not put anything in a parcel saying, "Hey, look, yo, can you please leave me five star feedback? Can you please, you know, contact me in regards to returns and all these different things?" I think if you describe the item quite clearly. Um, and you're in a category that doesn't have a high returns, uh, you should be fine. Um, so what I normally do is that I sell, like I said, manga, collectibles, yeah, Skylanders, a lot of Skylanders, and all these different things, but they're not in categories that are associated with high returns, right? Clothing sellers, they're going to get returns regardless. Regardless if you put something in the letter, uh, in the box saying, hey, please you know, leave me feedback or please reach out to me before you open a um, not an item not as return thing. So one another point of this one is they're actually saying that they're opening returns as item not, rec not as described. That's more often than not probably because they're actually having the buyers pay for return postage where all my listings are, are 30 days free returns and my return rate is less than probably half a percent. So just take that into consideration. Um, I do sell a little bit of clothes, but I'm moving away from that market. <laughs> I told you before I hate clothes. So we'll get on to the next one now. Does feedback get transferred when I switch from a personal business account? Yes, it does. So your your feedback uh, and your store health, you know, for example, you know, if you're above uh, above standard or you're top rated and all these different things, that gets transferred across your account. It's just a matter of, you know, 
you, your account stays the same. It's just what the switch behind the scenes clicks on. And that's what we got today. Uh, that's the Reddit questions <laughs> quite easily done, put out for for a thing. But once again, a uh, big shout out to Shane, So Did City Flips for the shirt and for the stickers. I do appreciate them. Um, the reseller Locker Room Podcast as well. Thank you for that sticker. Oh, I almost forgot what I was going to show you, actually. <laughs> so I did a little bit of sourcing yesterday uh, when I went to pick up the Skyladers. I came across this ugly thing. It's Goomy. Um, it's actually a dragon Pokemon, if you can believe it. I think there's a little bit of stuff there. But no, he's quite clean. Uh, smells like mothballs. <laughs> so I've actually got him from Vinny's or St. Vincent de Mar uh, Vincent de Paul. Um, as much as I hate Vinny's in Canberra, the ones I went to uh, where I grew up in Maitland, uh, New South Wales, which is near Newcastle, um, they're pretty decent, right? So really small shop you know, ran by lovely old ladies and they're fantastic. And I probably chatted them for 20, 30 minutes after that. But what makes this one so important, it came out in 2015. It comes with its tag. And also that, we oh, better bring him up a little bit. It's a very rare character, right? So from a plush perspective, like I said before, is you'll actually find Pikachu, you'll see Charmander, Charizard, you know, Squirtle, you know, Jigglypuff, all those Pokemon running around, you know, left, right, and so you probably, you'd be, you'd be, flat strap trying to find a um walking into a thrift store or an op shop and not find a pikachu where we where i am but Gumi is one of those ones that really don't <laughs> appear very often and because he's got his tag on as well i've probably listed him for about a hundred dollars i think i've opened him up to offers i don't normally accept offers however um because i don't know what to put him at i paid six bucks for him um i probably wouldn't have paid that much if he didn't have his tag or i probably would have actually because he's quite a rare pokemon um but yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll accept offers and see what comes through. But for six dollars, you know, you can't go wrong with that. And when I was down there laughing at the Salvation Army because salvos are <laughs> brutally expensive in a low socioeconomic area where I come from, um, came across this in Lifeline. So this is basically Harry Potter and the Philosopher's of the Stone. Uh, paid five dollars for it, and right next to it was the second book, yeah, Chamber of Secrets. So. This one's, I wouldn't put in a variation listings because the likelihood of me coming across these books again is minimal to nothing. So um, I'm in <laughs> in negotiations with Mr. Mrs. Octopus at the moment because she wants to keep them for herself. Um, but I want to move them on because they're quite chunky. <laughs> but um, as it stands, they do have a quite a sell -through, good sell-through rate. So I paid $5 each. They would probably go for about 35 plus posts. Um, and I would expect they probably go within within a week, um, which falls within my metrics, right? Um, and I'd probably promote them at five percent, like just to move them out, because five percent is my really low rate. Um, and other than that, that's pretty much it, actually. I didn't really pick up many much else. I, I did put up a, um, a a Jonathan Jonathan Thurston for those people that know the NRL, which is our I suppose our version of Gridiron for those overseas. Um, so basically picked up a, a jersey on Facebook Marketplace for $8 the other day. I had some support from uh, Diary of a Flipper and also Flip for Fam for James. Uh, they let me know <laughs> what it's worth. I was going to put it on for three fifty, but it actually turned out it was actually a prototype jersey. Um, so I've thrown it up for $1,000 and see how it goes. And like I said, um, I've put offers on that as well just to test the market and see how it goes. But um, generally speaking, I don't put offers on. So, But let me know in the comment section below, are you pro offers or are you, you know, steering away from offers? Uh, I'm happy to send offers out all, all day and all night. Um, and over the last couple of years, I used to, you know, as soon as offers came in, I used to turn them on all the time. But what I'm finding is that I'm not yeah i'm not not selling phenomenal amounts because i'm back at work now but i'm selling comparable amounts to what i was with office on and you know i'm not having to deal with <laughs> idiots per se um but yeah but i'll be quite curious to see how you are going with your office and all those different things but so let me know in the comment section below but anyway i think that's enough for us today i'm trying to keep these episodes shorter and shorter i don't want to have a 30 minute yeah, talking spree uh i did get a little bit sunburnt yesterday so my face is quite red and the screen is not giving me any favors but anyway if you like this type of video by all means please like comment share and subscribe if you haven't already um i'm i'm trying to get on top of uh blake at the moment so blake gore fine <laughs> so he's 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 
I'm catching up to him quite quickly. So I'd be greatly appreciated if you would, uh, you know, consider subscribing. Um, and by all means, you know, if you've got any questions that you'd like me to have a crack at, by all means, I'm a subject matter and expert on everything, but I have been around for a little bit, so I can probably give you a decent answer from my perspective. Um, yeah, and you better get your questions in before the octopus comes back because <laughs> yeah, he's not as uh, forgiving as me. But anyway, uh, we'll catch you next time. <laughs> Bye.